as part of our Shark Bay trip, we're buying quite a bit of gear to try and make sure that we don't have too many problems on the way, and if we do, we're going to have something to sort them out with. Now here are a few items that we've bought. These fall more in the category of tools and related gear. Now the first thing to look at is this little fellow in the patch. Now most people with a four wheel drive are going to know what that is. That is a rapid tire deflator. And that's used for when you're going to be driving in soft sand, things like that. What it does, you place it on the valve and you can actually pull the valve core out, unscrew it and pull it out. We'll give you a little demo of that when we actually get out and have to do it. But uh, quite a nice little unit, brass fittings, good little rubberized coating on the pressure gauge there, so a, bit of, a little bit shock resistant. Nice little patch for it to come in. Now this particular brand is called Rough Country and we picked that up for around right about the $40 mark I think. The next item, although we do have torches, is a torch. We have some very good quality torches that we use all the time. This one is apparently 1500 lumen which makes it pretty powerful. We got this from Audi, it was about $30. In fact, I think it was exactly $30. And it's a fairly decent sized torch. That's a fairly chunky little beast. All metal construction, single LED, on off switch here, not much more to it than that. It doesn't have any kind of uh, strap, wrist strap, or anything like that. There's three different settings on the torch. The initial one is high. Now that is pretty bright. I've got the lights on. I've got the studio light on here. And that is really still quite a bright light. Second setting is a little bit lower and you have an emergency flash setting and that and that is designed to flash an SOS I believe. Yep. Dash 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 dot dot dot. So uh, a good tactile switch. The we've got a couple of Phoenix torches and we love them to bits. But the one thing I don't like about them is the on-off switch is really hard to find in the dark. Now that, I can feel that with my eyes shut, no problems at all. Nice feeling little switch, very positive when you turn it on. We'll tell you a little bit more about that and show you it in operation when we're out and camping. But yeah, good chunky little torch. The Phoenix torches are only about yay big. They are meant to put out a thousand lumens, so this fella is half again as much as the Phoenix torches. Certainly looks nice. Has a removable, rechargeable battery. Underneath that is your USB port, so you've got a cover that winds up and keeps that out of harm's way. And it has both a micro and a standard USB. Now the reason for that is it will actually work as a power bank as well. So there's a lot of companies that are now building their products to have more than one use. So if I'm charging it, I would use the micro USB, and if I'm using this as a power bank, so I'm drawing power from it, I would be using the standard USB port. Feels very nice. The battery can come out of the top. It can also come out from the bottom. It's just one battery that sits in there. So quite pleased with the look and feel of that so far. Time will tell if it was worth the money. Now in comparison to the Phoenix torches, which are twice the price, uh, this is looking like it's pretty good value. We'll let you know how it goes, and 
whether or not it stands up to the test of time. Now we know the Fenix torches are extremely rugged. I've dropped them from head height onto a metal checker plate floor and at least a couple of times and no ill effects at all. I wonder if the same would happen to this but I'm not about to try that. Of course those were accidents, not something you would do on purpose. One more item that comes with this is a rather peculiar little beacon that screws into the top and that's for an emergency situation and that diffuses the light and produces a very bright emergency beacon light okay so once again it's a torch supplied by Audi and it has a three-year guarantee on it which is pretty impressive something I like that uh, manufacturers stand behind their products three years is pretty good so the settings on here the high beam is 100 percent power the low beam is 50 percent power it has a 4000 milliamp hour battery and they say the beam has a reach of 400 meters now i'm not about to rush out and measure that i'll just take their word for it so definitely something to think about if you see those on sale again in audi we didn't really need it, but we thought, ah, what the hell. Now we come to the big box. Now this used to be where my drone lived. Not anymore. The drone has now been moved to a larger box. In fact, I'm hoping to get a new drone shortly. This is now the toolbox. It weighs an absolute ton. But... what's in the red box shortly basic stuff we've still got a few more things to throw in here we do need some bits and pieces I've only got one bit of tape in here we'll have a, a box of uh, rivets and screws and nuts and whatnot our lovely little Ozito electric screwdriver which also acts as a drill it's got torque settings on it so if you don't want to over tighten things little light on the front shines up on where you're drilling so if you happen to be in a dark spot we love Ozito gear I use it all the time we've got quite a few of their things battery charger for the Ozito here and then we've got some super cheap auto tools now these things are not really top quality but they're not bad either the tool pro stuff from SCA We've been buying a fair bit of super cheap auto stuff recently and the, the Tool Pro gear doesn't seem all that bad. I haven't had anything fail yet anyway. We have some multi-grips, small ones, some long nose, a larger multi-grip. We have some wire snips, a pair of snub nose pliers, needle nose pliers we have a river we have a riveter I use rivets a lot for a lot of different applications so uh, it's always very handy to have a riveter around now I have absolutely no idea what the name of these things is but a pair of adjustable jaws will do they're just manual adjustable wrench and and some tools for the Ozito now that actually belongs to our angle grinder but I keep it there so I don't lose it A set of drills screwdriver heads tech screw all sorts of bits and pieces for different things wood drills so that's a very handy little kit to have portable all kept in a nice little box okay and now we get to the red box also two pro gear now these are pretty expensive we got it for 50% off which I was pretty pleased about I was looking for a set of tools that were metric only because I've got absolutely nothing that uses Imperial This is a metric only set. You can see we've got our tow ball spanner here. 
Always very handy to have one of those if your tow ball bolts start to come loose. This is for our mean mother track rack, so we keep that in there as well. And here we have a nice set of ratchets. We've got a breaker bar, varying sizes of the ratchets. A spanner set, although that's not as comprehensive as I would like. And quite a few different ratchet fittings, spark plug removers. So we're hoping that this set, if we ever really need to do anything significant, this will give us the tools to be able to do the job. Nice little set of Allen keys there as well, some pretty hefty ones. And that I picked up for, I think it was $94, and that was 50% off at Super Cheap. So I just happened to be in there at exactly the right time. Uh, we got some sets of screwdriver heads and whatnot. Standard screwdrivers, Phillips head screwdrivers, various other fittings. Three different lots of those. So overall, we're hoping that uh, if we have a really good set of tools, this is going to see us through. I was rather pleased to find that the Tool Pro box fits exactly into the safety case. And basically, and that all our tools then are in one box, although I gotta tell you. That weighs a lot. I would say that's probably more than 20 kilos there. So that's a little look at some of the gear we've been picking up. Undoubtedly there'll be more to add to this before I put the video out. This morning we're having a look at some mods to the little dinghy, uh, a change to the camper trailer, and after that I'm going to be unloading what I've got in the camper trailer to see what's there and then repacking it on the video just so I can keep track of everything so uh, this video is uh, not only for the channel but also for my own reference later on first thing you can see that's changed on the boat are these seats we've got little clips can be taken off we'll travel with them on the boat will be upside down on the trailer so uh, they shouldn't have a problem staying on there one less thing to pack and a little bit of comfort. They're easy enough to put on. You just have some press studs. You just drill a few little holes in there, put your press studs on and that's very simple. Another addition to the boat is the little cutting board there. That's permanently mounted. Just put some tech screws straight through that and into the seat. So another thing you don't have to worry about packing away and those things stand up to the sun pretty well. Of course the seats won't be left on, they'll come off when the sun's on them. Just to have a look at this morning, we've installed six rod holders in the boat. And there's also a new solar panel that's going to be underneath the boat when we're traveling be out in that position when we're camping it's a 200 watt panel picked it up off eBay it's only a cheapie we don't want to really spend too much money on it it's just been put on with a couple of bits of angle aluminium and the edges rounded off so I don't cut myself when I'm playing around with it it's got a little modification on the side here it used to be an ordinary water filler, it got damaged and I've changed it so that we've got a hose going down into the tank, we've got a top on there, it's all secured, it's not going anywhere and what I can do with that is insert the manual caravan water pump and this is the pump that we use, it's just a standard caravan water pump, manual pump that slips into the hose pipe here got a quite a tight fit so it manages to vacuum the water up and just pump the handle up and down as per normal 
and that will allow us to draw water from the tank if the main pump fails. As you can see here we've had a bit of work done on the trailer. New tyres, new shocks, uh, you can't see it but it's also new bearings. She's got independent suspension so it's a proper off-road trailer. I spent about 1100 and something getting all the work done. Hopefully that's going to mean we're not going to have any problems. We are used to having some problems when we go away on these trips so uh, we do everything we can before we go to make sure as many things as possible are sorted out. Okay, now we're going to have a look at exactly what's in the front bin here. I need to know precisely what we're carrying and whether there's anything I can take out and if there's anything I need to put back in. Okay, so let's have just a quick look at what's in the front bin for the moment. Assortment of hoses and a waste pipe. Plastic bucket, metal bucket. Little shower head there, there's also another one attached to the hot water system. Guy lines. There's a few hockey straps. Some spare ratchet straps. Got a water filter there. That needs to be put in a bigger bag somewhere. That'll probably go in the kitchen area. It's more suitable for that. Uh, we have some boating gear that's got to go in the boating bag. The Red Arc 400 watt sine wave inverter. We've also got a 1000 watt inverter in here, but uh, the Red Arc is sine wave, so we use that more often. Two boxes of tent pegs. They're medium sized and pretty strong. They're from Aldi. Some shade cloth ground sheets there. A box full of goodies, tape, things to fix things, odds and ends. Next to that, 240 volt extension cable and a six power point outlet. Small crowbar that can help getting pegs out of the ground sometimes and is useful for other stuff. Mallet for putting pegs in. bag full of star packets that's for sandy areas for use on the annex I'm pretty sure we'll be using some of those a couple of spare tent poles here some sandbags we'll be trying those out see how they go a larger bag a little beige a little beige bag there is a larger set of pegs and the black pegs there are sand pegs so the gear in here is mostly to do with setting up. A spare little tarp here. So that's a bit of an inventory of the front box for now. And the last couple of items going into the top of that just to add a bit of padding, stop things moving around, are the life jackets. So that's the front box just about packed. Now I know what's in it. The next job is to pull all the stuff out of the main part of the trailer and have a look and see what's in there and repack it so I know exactly what is there and what we still need to put in although as you can see not a lot of room left. And the last thing we'll do is to unpack the kitchen see exactly what's in that make sure there's nothing missing and hopefully then we'll be able to put all the trailer together Turn it round and get it ready to move out of the garden. A quick look at the gear from the kitchen. We use just ordinary old plastic cutting board. This is used when we're putting together meals. Uh, you put your ingredients in there before you start cooking. It makes life a bit simpler. A wok with a lid. Medium sized saucepan, another clear fry pan, a couple of bowls for washing up or washing your face, one for each, larger saucepan, small saucepan, two lighters, two boxes of matches, little head torch, 
little box with some rubber bands in it and in fact one of the boxes of matches, the small box of matches will go in there to keep it watertight. A uh, little light that is also an insect killer. Now the little water filter that we saw in the front bin has now been moved to the kitchen so that goes in this area. We have a little flat barbecue plate we can put that on top of the cooker couple of different sides to that depending on what you want to cook and a colander and that's the basic cooking implements and of course then we've got all the other utensils and we'll have a look at that in a tick and everything you just saw there fits in this cupboard here so it's quite snug once it's all in there but uh, all fits in quite okay and so in there we also have the cooker and the sink little work area and then on the end of that we have a board that attaches to it not part of the original setup but it's a useful extra bit of space then we have the utensils box all the general bits and pieces in there the rest of the cooking gear now one particular headache we've run up against in getting this already is that the newer type gas cylinders are a lot fatter than the old ones. Why that is I don't know. They're supposed to be rated at the same amount. But as you can see the connection in this one all done up nice and tight. But with the new bottle unfortunately we're going to have to find something else to go on there and help tighten that up because the top of the trailer is going to be resting above the gas cylinder so there's no way it's going to fall out but we just have to make sure it doesn't slide out this way and doesn't move around too much we don't want too much in the way of vibrations especially going over corrugations we want those in nice and tight now we've still got to make up our minds whether we're going to try and go up in one shot and get up there in a day or whether we're going to stop along the way and if we do stop are we going to use the side awning on the car? We certainly don't want to set the camper trailer up just for one night. Now if we do decide that we're going to use the awning, this is the gear we're going to need. We've got the awning itself, camp bed, a couple of mattresses, and that's the floor to the awning. That should actually be inside the awning bag so I'll have to repack that so still yet to make that decision we could actually stop overnight somewhere uh, stay in a roadhouse or motel unit something like that cost a little bit extra but I guess what we'll do when it comes time to make the decision we'll have a look at what the weather's doing and if it's rainy weather then we probably won't take this gear Yeah, we're there trying to unload everything in the trailer. I don't really need to do that. I'll just have a look around. We have a large table, a heat bead funnel, two bags of heat beads, extra sheet, a roof anchor over there. Uh, there's some kitchen utensils in the box with the blue handle, uh, Aldi light. And we had a food box down here. Behind that in the little beige bag is general utensils, knives, forks, plates, that sort of thing. Over the other side we've got the 130 watt solar panel, we've got the lights, we have a second shower tent I think it is, just as a spare, a couple of rods, Next to me here is all the gear for the annex, plus the extension for the kitchen, and the other items include two chairs, a light table, a little step, a cupboard, a folding cupboard, folding bucket, brush and dustpan, fire pit, that's the black thing, 
little stool, shower tent, and a trolley that's for moving water or moving the porta potty. And on this side, you can see the fishing box. Already had a look at that one in the other video. We have the fan, the Audi fan, and behind that, just out of sight, is the porta potty. And of course, a couple of crab nets sitting on top there. So that's everything that we've got so far packed away in the trailer. Now it's just a matter of checking through our lists and making sure everything's there that we need. Well that's it for another video. If you enjoyed this one, please remember to click the like button. And if you like the channel, subscribe and you'll get notified every time a new video comes up. We have a new video every Saturday morning and occasionally midweek as well. Okay, thanks for watching. Cheers.